In this series of videos, we are building a working prototype application based on a database, in this case using Oracle XE, and we're using Oracle Apex Application Express. If you want to work along with the examples, you should start with Video 1, and you should go to this URL and download the scripts you need to build some tables and insert data so that you're ready to build the application. In this video, we are not actually going to do anything with the application. What I want to show you is how you can use another uh, software tool from Oracle that will show you how the underlying database that this application uses, how it is actually constructed. And to do this, we're going to use uh, Oracle SQL Developer. So you can Google that and locate this particular uh, web page where you can download Oracle SQL Developer. It's a pretty simple install. You download a zipped file. You unzip that file. You look for the executable file, which will be uh, something with an exe extension. It'll say sqldeveloper.exe, for example. You can use that to create a shortcut on your desktop. Um, and then you can use this tool. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it in terms of uh, taking a look at a schematic diagram of some tables and their relationships. So even though back here in Apex, we can go to SQL Workshop and we can select the object browser, we can see the tables, but we don't see, without clicking on individual tables, we do not see uh, the constraints that actually implement the relationships between one table and other tables. So I think you'll find SQL Developer is very helpful for this. So I've already got it installed and I have a folder on the desktop where I've got shortcuts. So I'm going to go ahead and open up SQL Developer. And so when I get this open, this is what I see. I have one connection that I had created previously and this is for the sys account which is the system administrator. I'm going to right click on that and look at the properties so you can see the screen where I actually made the connection settings. The connection name is simply the text that you see over in the left side of SQL Developer. Then you have the username which I always list in the label just so I know exactly what um, account I'm using to make the connection with. Then you have a place for the password and you can save the password, although I would recommend if this is not your personal computer uh, that people generally don't have access to, I would say don't save the password. And then whenever you double click this connection, it will prompt you for the password. I make the connection here. I didn't actually have to change anything because by default, as we'll see again here in a second, by default the settings here assume that you're connecting to a locally installed Oracle XE database. The only thing you would have to change for the system administrator is to change it from default to sysdba. Once I've done that, if I will type in my password and click connect, then I'm going to have a connection. And then what you have is, in a second, it's going to bring up an SQL worksheet where I could uh, execute SQL commands. What I really want to do with this tool, though, is I want to go to File, I want to go to Data Modeler, I want to Import, and I'm importing the Data Dictionary. The Data Dictionary would be all the definitions related to the names of a table, the names of its columns, the data types for those columns, and a variety of other bits of information. So it's called Metadata. It's also called Data Dictionary it's for an actually constructed database. So I'm going to click that and start this interface. and. I have the database administrator sys account connection and I could use that but I'm going to go ahead and connect through the actual schema that holds the tables just to go through the setup process again. So I'm going to click add and then I'm going to do uh, student teams because that's the actual name of the, the account, the schema and you would be able to find this in Apex. You see that name appear in a lot of the wizards when you're creating pages uh, or tables for your application. The password uh, I will type in. And I won't save it. I don't need to change anything. Default is fine. All the settings here uh, are for the locally installed Oracle XE. So I'll click test and I have success and I will now connect. 
Then I will click, so I have this, uh, I'll select that and I will click Next. And this is a little misleading because it's showing a bunch of other schemas, but the fact is um, you will not be able to access these if they are schemas that you don't have passwords to. So the fact that they're listed here doesn't mean they're readily available to you. If I were using um, the SIS account, I could probably access everything. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next after checking student teams. Now I see all the objects built within student teams and there are a lot of things built here that aren't directly related to our application so I need to pick out the things that I actually want. Some of these things were installed by Apex because I had it create um, the workspace uh, way back in one of the earlier videos and there's there are ways to get around this so you don't get some of these extra objects but in my case, I'll just go ahead and pick the tables out that I want. I want attendances, I want evaluations, eval items, eval item scores. Scroll down, I want projects, student major lookup, students, teams, and workshops. You also see that you have tabs down here where you can pick other types of objects within the database management system. But I'm going to take these and click Next and click Finish. and then go ahead and close and this is why I wanted to show you this what this does is give us a schematic diagram that looks very much like a crow's feet data model but it's not exactly what's uh, what's uh, corresponds exactly with a crow's feet notation but we see things like the workshop table it's in the student team schema we see the names of the columns, we see the uh, definition of the data type and the field size, we see the definition for the primary key, and we also see, and this is very helpful, that if we have something like attendances, which is on the many side of the relationship of workshops to attendances, we see that we have a foreign key with the F by it that relates to workshop. We have a foreign key for student ID that relates to students. If you bring up this diagram and you have a table with no relationship linking it to another table, chances are you have a, a problem in the construction of your database. These relationships are not just visual, they are actual constraints that you built using the object browser and they have to exist in the database in order to enforce what we call referential integrity. Without this relationship, I could make up a workshop ID and not have it relate to anything that actually exists in the workshop table. With this relationship, I cannot do that. So I'm going to have greater data consistency and quality by enforcing those relationships. And this diagram will show me if I'm missing relationships. So this can be a very useful tool that you can then click File, go to Data Modeler, Go to print diagram and print it out as a PDF and put it away as part of your uh, hard copy documentation. So it's very useful and I wanted to point that out to you. As well as I wanted to bring you back to the original data model from which you built the uh, database for your application. There should be a very close correspondence between what you see here in the data model in terms of the entities that became tables and what you see in the schematic diagram of the actual tables constructed in the database. In real life you may find that your data model does not match up exactly with what you end up building in your database but there should be a lot of uh, common elements and the schematic will give you important documentation.